In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie the howitzer fly. The reason I call it that is because the foam head is called the howitzer. This thing helps me catch a ton of bass, especially on the Guadalupe River. And it's just so much fun to fish, and it's a pretty easy tie. You're going to start out with a gamagatsu worm hook. It's a 4 aught hook, so it's pretty big. You want to make sure that this thing is clamped down nice and tight in your vise. And then what I'm doing here is I'm actually knocking down the barbs in the hook, which are meant to keep like live bait, like worms on the hook. So I've put those down so that they won't cut your thread. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bodkin point to put a hole in the middle of your foam head and then try to fit it on to the hook. It's super important with this fly and all foam head flies to make sure that the eye of the hook can fit through easily enough through the foam head because if not when you put the glue on the material that's on the fly and then you try to squeeze the foam head on there while glue's on there if it doesn't pass through easily enough it can warp the shape of the foam head which i mean they're not like super expensive but they're not cheap so then the next step once you've tied your kind of pilot hole into that uh, foam head, you're going to get some marabou. And if you wanted to, you could use all these same materials in any color scheme that you wanted. I just happen to do it in white because I really like white. I'm going to use this nice fluffy marabou feather. I'm going to cut it off. And I'm, I'm, if you look at the length of that marabou, it's about double, it's about the size of the, sh or the length of the shank. So you want the fly to be double the size of the hook. Then I'm getting this flashaboo and I'm cutting it into halves. So that's one half that I just tied in. I've wrapped on either side of the marabou. And then I just got the second segment. And then this is another strip. And I'm essentially taking that flash and trying to put it all around the tail marabou feather to try and evenly make it flashy on all sides. Not super important. You don't even necessarily need it. But I like to make it extra flashy because I think it gives it a nice little glint when it's bright outside. Then I'm gonna take this stuff, which is called Palmer Chenille. It's like a wrap that's got these little flashy strips on there. They come in many different colors. My favorite color to use is actually tan, but I'm using this pearl um, wrap in order to be consistent with the colors of the fly. And then what you're seeing me do right there with that marker is to just mark where I think the back of that foam head needs to go. And that's so that I know how far to wrap this Palmer chenille up to uh, the back of where I think that foam head is gonna need to go. And I've sped this up pretty fast. It's not a very fast process. And if you're smart, <laughs> you'll actually use the rotary function in your vise instead of doing it by hand. But when I make these videos, I kind of black out and don't necessarily do what's most ergonomic. So next you're gonna take these star burst fibers and you could use pretty much anything as long as it matches the color of what uh, the fly profile is going to be. So for me, I'm using white. So I'm using like a pearly white looking see-through translucent fiber that's going to be really flashy. I'm putting this here because it gives the fly more body. If you look at the fly, it's a little awkward because that foam head is super poofy and outward. And then the body is not exactly as wide or girthy as that. Um, how it's her head is to me that's that made it look really strange which is why i'm adding in all these extra fibers this is another type of dubbing that i just call like an ice dubbing i got this forever ago on i think wish.com so i don't actually know what it's called but i've got like three bags of it because i liked it so much and so i just call it like ice white dubbing you can get things similar to this uh, from many different dubbing places or if you're at your fly shop just go and look around and they'll definitely have some sort of ice dubbing blend that's got little fibers like that that just look really, really good when they're wet. So I'm putting a lot of glue on there. And before doing that, I made sure that that head is going to fit through there easily. And so you're seeing me push it through until the eye of the hook comes through. That way you're good to go. There's no weird morphing of the shape of the foam head. If you've tied these flies enough or just in general, you've tied foam head flies you're going to mess up eventually and you'll just be pissed. It's like, ah, I just lost, you know, a dollar fifty on one foam head that looks like crap because I didn't make sure that that hole was big enough. Next step that I like to do 
is I'm going to use the 3D. These are the 5 millimeter 3D eyes in yellow and black. I also use silver or in black and red. But right now I've got an abundance of these yellow ones. I get them off Amazon. The I, most common ones I use are going to be 4 millimeter for like my hopper flies. But these are the big ones, the 5 millimeter that I use for streamers and poppers. I'm going to finish that in with some UV resin thick. Just going to surround the, the eye itself so that it kind of locks it in as good as you can. Eventually, I think these eyes will probably fall out. If you fish this thing as aggressively as I do, like I have no fear. I'm going to throw this at trees. It rocks. It's going to hit docks. And so eventually, the eyes are probably the first thing to fall out. But, I mean, look at this fly. It looks great. The action's awesome. It moves a ton of water. And it's a lot of fun to fish. If you stay tuned, I'll show you all the fish I caught on the guad with this fly. So we are in Hunt, Texas, and I'm on a kayak with a buddy, Bill, and this place was just spectacular. It was a super calm night. It had been a really hot day. There was practically no wind, and I hooked into, I think, like 25, 30 fish. I only used the howitzer for I bet, an hour, maybe, maybe even a little bit less than that, and I, I caught eight or nine really nice bass. And uh, this one I caught after a couple of strips on the bank. The fish in the Guadalupe River aren't necessarily enormous, but there are a lot of them, and they're really, really fun to catch. I also was kind of tempted to throw a mouse fly because I think that would do really well next to the bank. But look at that, that little meat pie. Pick that guy up, clean that fly off, and just gorgeous. Who doesn't love catching bass on the top water? I'm using a five weight rod with floating line and I felt that that was pretty good for uh, what my needs were. I wasn't going to catch anything over like three pounds. At least I very rarely will catch anything over three pounds in the Guadalupe River. And when I'm throwing it, I'm making sure that it lands not like soft. I'm letting it land pretty hard. And then uh, I tried a bunch of different speeds. It was super hot all day long. And the topwater bass bite wasn't on until the sun was starting to go down. You'll see it get kind of dark in this video. Uh, but once once it got to be about 82 degrees Boy. outside, the, the bite just turned on right away. And they started hitting everything that was on top of the water. So the howitzer was just perfect. And um, I, the thing that worked the best was not fast strips. It was throwing the fly. I would I kind of canvas. I stay in one spot. And I just There's cast 360 all the way around myself, working in 10 foot segments going, I'll cast someplace on the bank, then I'll go, if it doesn't work, I'll cast 10 feet to the left. And then that doesn't work, 10 feet to the left and so on and so forth. And I kind of park my kayak somewhat in the middle of the water. And it just, it worked fantastic. The, the retrieve that worked the best that day was throw it out, let it sit, one 1,000, two 1,000. If it doesn't get hit right away, then I'm going to start out with a slow strip. One, two, three, four. Burp, burp, burp. Like, that's the each time I'm counting is one strip. And then if no action, after a little bit of time, I'll recast. I'm still relatively new to this whole content creation thing, that's and I'd love here. to know your yes. feedback. Do you enjoy videos like this where I narrate over the fishing? Would you rather it be just the tying of the fly? I always felt that it made a lot of sense to do the fly tie and then afterwards show that that fly actually can catch fish. I thought it was always really silly uh, to see videos of like kind of flies that people had invented and then no proof that they actually worked on the water, Incredible. which is why I have a lot more reels than I do have long form video. But if you got anything out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would comment and subscribe and give me some genuine feedback. Thanks so much for watching.